Hey guys, Tony here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the latest 100 inch screen from Vava, which is, in my opinion, a game changer when it comes to projector screens, and something that I really hope manufacturers will do more of in the future. So make sure you stick around to the end, where I'll give my verdict on whether or not I think you should buy one. Now, I made a video on the first version of this screen, and since then, Vava have made some big improvements to the design, which will hopefully change the way screens are made in the future. So hit the like button, Subscribe to the channel if you're not already, as we take a look at the 100 inch screen paired with the Vava 4K laser TV, so stay tuned. So in a previous video, I showed the Vava 4K laser TV paired with a 100 inch Vava screen. At the time of making the video, there were some issues that I noted, such as sagging and rippling in the corners, as well as some issues getting things lined up and the corner pieces not going on properly. Since then, Vava have come up with a new way of putting the screen together, which will change the way screens are made in the future. But before we get into the video, if you enjoy content around home theater, including home theater tours, product reviews, and technology, consider subscribing to the channel as I make my push to 20,000 subscribers. I'd like to thank everyone everyone who has supported me so far and would love to have you on board as well. So that I can set the scene for you, I have an upstairs living room which is underutilized and after some serious negotiations, my wife has agreed to let me set the room up as another media room. I have some brand new Crick speakers which I just received and I will be doing a separate video on them very soon, but the deal was that I could set the room up if I don't make any holes for speakers in the walls or the ceilings. So I decided to go with a 3.1 setup. I do have a dedicated home theater, so this would be the perfect space to enjoy movies and TV with better audio than just a soundbar and on a 100 inch screen. So to give a quick overview of the screen itself, it is 100 inches, it is designed to be an ultra short throw screen with material that will reject light coming from all angles except from the bottom. So you can use this screen with some ambient light. It won't work completely in full or direct light or light that's coming in from the side, but it does work pretty well in most situations with the blinds down and only low light in the room. I will have some demos later in the video showing the screen's performance under various lighting conditions. So I enlisted my son's help and we unpacked the screen which was very well packaged with lots of soft foam and cable tied to keep everything secure and undamaged during transit. There are two things that make this screen a real game changer in my opinion and the first one is that the screen frame comes in two pieces. It has two sets of hinges which allow it to be compacted down but fold out to form a 90 degree angle as well as hinge the other way to basically double the length on the horizontal. There are two of these pieces which form the screen and then they are secured together with bracing pieces and some screws. Everything fits millimeter perfect and then there are further bracing pieces slightly off-centered as well as two rails which have sliding brackets which will allow you to move the screen up and down. Perfect for an ultra short throw setup if you need to make slight adjustments due to the throw distance of the projector. Next we move to the screen material and after placing a blanket down my son and I unrolled the screen with its protective cover it down and then place the screen frame gently on top making sure that the arrows were facing the correct way up. This is where I think the second game changer has been implemented and that is that there are tension bars installed inside the frames of the screen which have springs already attached. There is a single screw in the center which when tightened will pull the springs tight and increase the tension and therefore eliminating any wrinkles. This is done on all four sides of the screen and after adding the springs to the corners we then attached all of the springs to the screen and then tensioned the bars on all four sides which did take a little longer than I thought it would due to it being a hex head rather than a screw head. This resulted in a very tight and tensioned screen with not even one small wrinkle or sag. This, in my opinion, is how screens should be made in the future. Once the screen was on, it was time to put on the bezels, which fit really well, and they screwed down really easily. Then another change from the previous model, and that was the corner pieces. Instead of using screws, there are slight grooves in the actual frame, and then the plastic corners just clicked right in, and the screen was done. Next, we found the center of the room, and using the laser level, we got the position of the four brackets which would hold the screen up. Using hollow wall anchors, we measured and installed them and screwed the cleats up to the wall so that it was a simple matter of just dropping the screen on and the job was done.
Now I'm not going to cover off the installation of the speakers or the receiver in this video, but I have a 3.1 speaker setup for this space, which includes the Crix acoustics for the left and right speakers and an identical speaker in the graphics for the center, with the main difference being that the graphics is sold as a single speaker with the grill badge oriented at the bottom, and it is also sold as a single unit, whereas the acoustics are sold as a pair. I think you'll agree that these speakers look stunning finished in the real wood veneer and they look really good in this room. The colors match the walls and the furniture really well. We also have the Seismix 3 Mark 7 subwoofer, which has a great rumble and deep bass and fills the space out well. These were ordered specifically for this space. However, I won't be covering them off in this video as I plan to do a separate video on the whole setup. At the moment, I'm using some placeholder furniture that I had on hand just to get the heights, but I will be either making something or finding something that is suitable that will make it look nice and pretty. As you can see, I have keystone it in perfectly to the edges of the screen and at night, it looks like a giant 100 inch television. So that I'm not pinged for copyright, I'll play an intro from one of the new Netflix series so that you can get a feel for how it looks and should give you a good indication of the performance of the screen in various lighting conditions. So what do I think of the new version of this screen and do I think you should buy one? Well, I have to say I'm suitably impressed with the new version of the screen. When I made the first video, some of the issues with it weren't evident until over a week later, such as the sagging and rippling in the corners. But this one has held up really well, especially as it has the tension bars, which keep the springs nice and tight under pressure, which holds the screen very taut. I think that in a light controlled room or a room with minimal to moderate light that you can use this screen during the day. However, in full lighting conditions, I don't think it's watchable if you have light coming from the sides like I do. In darker conditions, this screen looks sensational and it has the feel of a giant TV. And if you're planning to use an ultra short throw projector, then this screen may be the one for you. It comes in at $649.99 US and is available for purchase from Vava directly and I'll have links in the description down below. It's back in stock from May 23rd. So let me know what you think of the setup down in the comments section and smash the like button if you found the video helpful. I'll have more videos coming of this setup once I make it all nice and pretty so make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss my future videos. A very big thank you to Vava for sending me the screen but that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now.